Um, 22 years in the police, and, and I've had some tough gigs. Um, don't expect any sympathy, um, but there have been some tough gigs. When I looked at the agenda for today, and having heard uh, Mark and Beverly speak, I knew this was going to be up there, and I think it's fair to say um, I wasn't wrong. Um, I want to start that by confirming a few things. Uh, first thing I want to confirm, I am actually the commander for Warsaw. I can confirm I am not security for the city. <laughs> I can also confirm I'm not 19. I wish I was, but I'm not 19. Um, and the last thing I'd like to confirm is, and again, hopefully Beverly will explore this with me after, um, I'm not what Beverly expected. So hopefully we'll get to the root cause of that and that'll be good, bad or indifferent. Um, but I want to start by thanking you. Um, thank you for uh, the invite for today. Um, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Um, what you've just said and um, the way in which you said it and the videos, um, I've heard lots of really positive things before I became the commander at Warsaw in terms of you and your family. That reinforced it and I'm not surprised that we're here today on the result of what I've just seen. So, I'm not gonna do the policing. Um, we've had some statistics and I'm not gonna do statistics and I'm not gonna tell you that knife crime is a priority for the police. Um, both of those are true. Um, it is a priority and knife crime is increasing. I actually want to talk about knife crime as actually a more personable, the impact on people. Because that's what it's about, it's about the impact on people, not the volume. And actually it touches everybody, as we've already heard from, from guests and from Mark and Beverly today. It touches the victims clearly, it touches families, it touches broader communities, it touches emergency service workers, it even touches the offenders. There is nobody that is untouched by knife crime and not in a positive way, it is all negative. So clearly I need to start, when I talk about that, with James. Um, I wasn't the commander at Warsaw then. I was uh, a superintendent in Birmingham City Centre. Now, I make no judgments on Birmingham City Centre compared to Aldridge, but comments that I've received, uh, certainly whilst I was still there, and certainly since I came here was, actually that's the kind of thing we'd expect to happen somewhere else. And that wasn't just from colleagues, I remember a few days after this tragic murder, um, speaking to the senior investigating officer, and we shared some words outside Lloyd House, the headquarters, and he said to me then, Andy, this is, this is shocking. Just, you know, this doesn't happen in this type of community. Didn't just share that with colleagues. Um, some of you in the audience will have clocked. I'm a local lad, um, born and bred in and around Warsaw. Um, I have family and friends that still live here. So when I saw this on the Sunday, um, again, I had that same feeling of shock and disbelief. This doesn't happen in Warsaw. Um, family and friends shared the same sentiment. The sad reality is, as we've already heard and we know, it does. Unfortunately, there are a number of very recent cases that reinforce the fact. And I'm just going to touch on them just so we understand the actual challenge that we're dealing with today. So clearly, James, tragically murdered, in October of that year, Reagan Asbury at the boxing match, again, tragically murdered. Just in the new year, January, Rezwan Ali at a house party, again, the victim of knife crime. And a short while later, as we all know, tragically, Miley Billingham. And then in February,